Okay, we've gotten a few questions about this project on module seven. That's this uh, cylindrical part that has the bolt circle pattern. And mainly the questions are around how do we get this bolt circle dimensioned? How do we create the center lines? As well as how do we put this into the model itself? How do we make sure it's a properly constrained uh, feature and so forth? So here's what the drawing should look like, right, when we're uh, done. Um, let me open the model from here. You didn't, didn't know you could do that. You can right click on this and you can say um, open, right, and open the model. And here's the model. Here's my whole pattern in it. If we take a look at that sketch, what you'll see is you've got a construction circle. The three points are located on that circle and they are defined by both the circle diameter and the angle uh, from a vertical and this one I'm assuming because I don't see an angle there and yet it's fully constrained this must be defined as perpendicular from this line to this line but let's see how we do that and see how we get here so I'm going to finish this sketch and I'm going to suppress the entire feature so we can recreate it and we'll start with the sketch and then we'll create the whole tool from the sketch so Pick a surface, doesn't matter which one of these three, as long as it's one that the holes goes through. You could pick the back surface, I guess, too, but this is just as simple to pick. So I'll right click on that and say new sketch. And we'll start with the circle, then we'll draw our points and our lines. So just start by drawing a typical circle. Make sure it's constrained to the center. And we'll go ahead and dimension that at three inches. And say okay we want to make this a construction circle we don't want this to be geometry that would drive a feature so if we select this and then come up to this area of the toolbar we click on this button here it says construction it changes this to dotted lines means it's construction geometry and when you're done just hit escape to get out of construction mode so now we'll take the points and we'll drop them on the circle so that they are coincident to the circle. And if you miss one, you can always use the coincident command up here to make it coincident. But as long as you see the circle go purple, it will be dropped on the circle. So I'm gonna hit that, that, and there's my last one. Okay, so I have my three points. They're on the circle, but notice I still need three dimensions or something to constrain them. It's not fully constrained, not fully defined. The next thing we're going to do is create construction lines to locate the points around the circle. So again, just you can start with a regular line. And I'm going to do one from the center down to the dot that's at the 6 o'clock position. I'm going to do another one from the center to this one over here in the first quadrant and another one from center to this one here over in the second quadrant and i'll right click and say okay again these are feature geometry right now because of the way they're drawn notice this one was drawn vertical so it is constrained but we want these to be construction geometry we only want the points to be used to create geometry so again we'll select this one and then we'll hold control and select the other two lines and we'll come up and hit the construction button and they change the dotted lines, which hit escape to get out of that mode. And so now the only thing we need to do is constrain these folks here. So what we can do is take and click the dimension button and we can pick the line. Make sure you don't hit the middle by accident. I seem to always hit it like when I'm not trying to. So pick one line and then the other line. And remember, this is supposed to be 45 from the horizontal, so from the vertical, it's going to be 135. Now, it says I'm fully constrained, which I assume means that these got drawn at exactly 90 degrees. And that they did. And notice if I put, try to put a 90-degree dimension on it, it says, do you want to make this a driven dimension because you can't over-constrain the sketch? And say, okay. So these got, obviously got drawn at 90 just by luck. Um, if that didn't happen, you'd have to put a second dimension, right? And you could go either from one to the next, or you could do another one from the vertical back up. It would be 135 again. So there's your sketch. Now you simply hit finish and go to the whole tool. 
and that is to be a 0.5 inch hole defaulted to millimeters there and now you have your holes okay, so I'm going to suppress this and then unsuppress my original dimensions just so I can go back uh, to my drawing here there you go I'll go back to my drawing and now we want to replicate uh, these features here these are not really features per se if we want to be uh, perfect about it we want to replicate okay. so now we're back to the drawing and we want to replicate these uh, geometric patterns I'm just going to delete what I got so that I can redo it for you there we go and, that, and now we're back to where you would be starting what you want to do to get this bolt circle as a centerline circle go to annotate and click on the this button here it says centered pattern so you need to get regular points there we want the centered pattern click that and now the first thing you have to do is select the outside of the circle then select each hole that is in the pattern and the odd thing is you have to select the last hole or rather you have to select the first hole again at the end Click that one, this one. Notice it's starting to create a line. That one, and you come around that one. You had to pick that one again. Right click and say create. And now we've got our uh, center lines going through the each circle. And you have them also at each um, circle themselves. You have their own center marks. We also want um, a major center line going across this way. So to do that, we just hit the regular center mark option. And we can kick the circle, and you kind of got to hit it. Because it's broken up, you have to hit it in a couple places. And like that, now you got your center line, or center mark rather, going all the way through the circle. We're going to use this for dimensioning, so that's why it was important to get that. Right click and say OK. Now, uh, we don't need a dimension for this one here for the angle because it is on the 270 degree effectively um, angle if you count from here right that's 270 it's on the center line that doesn't need its own angle but you will need one from here and over to here a couple different ways to do it and also we got to dimension the bolt circle we didn't mention the hole remember to dimension the hole you use the hole and thread tool and that gives you the size and the depth and we also need to go and edit it and put in three x in front of it unless you wanted to mention each hole independently but normally you would never do that so there we go and now we'll also dimension the bolt circle uh, diameter like so don't you know make so it's not on top of a hole or anything like that make sure it's in a reasonable location okay and now what we need to do is we need uh, angular dimensions to these two holes or to one with a 2x in front of it what we can simply do is pick this line from the center mark of the circle this line oops I picked the center like I say I always end up doing by accident Try that again, pick the center line of the circle, the center line of the hole, and now you get an angular uh, dimension. And if you want, you can simply back up and put 2x in front of it. Another option, of course, would be to do uh, a, sep a second uh, angular dimension here. But if you have 2x there, you don't put this one on, right? So it's either get rid of the 2x or uh, get rid of this. You can't have both gets in dimension mode you have to escape so that's how you do the, the bolt circle uh, markings as well as uh, the dimensions so hopefully that helps